Welcome back or welcome if this is your first time visiting. My name is Tina Hurley. I'm the founder and the CEO of a charity called Less Like More Heart. We help people in the community with disabilities in a variety of ways. But instead of talking a lot about what those services are today, I want more time for the guests that I have today because it's just a really cool topic and I don't think I want to bombard your brains with all the things I've said repeatedly if you're continuing to follow us. So if you're just new to the show, visit our website at www.lesslegmoreheart.com. Like, like how it sounds, lesslegmoreheart.com. Without further ado, I have a shoe in for the show today. I have April Shuin, who is a licensed acupuncturist and herbalist to tell us all about this amazing alternative therapy, why it matters, where it came from, who needs it, how long it takes, all the questions and answers, and I'm sure a few tangents and wiggles and giggles in the middle. So without further ado, April, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for inviting me. Seriously. So we met in a networking group, and um, it's really exciting to come across folks that have a space within the holistic world because, as we had mentioned just pre prior to this, oftentimes we don't get to that complementary you know, avenue of care or that alternative avenue of care until we've failed a lot of medical therapies and Western medical therapies. A lot of people are suffering and they're taxed emotionally and physically and financially and they are just desperate to find something that will make them feel better, make them more well. And I want to try to change that with this platform. I want folks to understand more options for their health and their wellness and try to get to those folks to get more information, education and options for treatment or maybe just prevention well before that point of suffering because you don't need to be even sick for a lot of these therapies. A lot of them can prevent sickness, but you don't really find that out in um, everyday life because our approach to healthcare is kind of sick care. You know, we're very reactive, not proactive. And so hopefully this platform and specifically this segment today will help you uh, learn some things and maybe start poking around for therapies like these to help you. So. Tell me anything. I mean, we could start anywhere because we met at this networking group. You share awesome um, time-specific information yeah. at every networking event. Everyone always does their 60-second elevator pitch, but you don't. You come in with something really tailored to the time, to the week, to the season, to the stressors, and it's all relevant, and it really feels like each time that you're just this vast well of knowledge. So I'm going to stop talking, <laughs> and I want you to just – Share it with everybody because there's so much. Uh, I think the most important thing, and, and there's no way to convey this, is that acupuncture doesn't hurt. Ever, that's the number one barrier people have is they're panicked about needles and they think about a hypodermic needle and they remember all the shots as children and they just don't want them. And it's nothing like that. And the message, I'd, if I could get anything, is like the amount of pain you're in right now, that's worse. You know, something that could relieve that, it, even if it's a tiny little pinch, which usually it isn't, most people feel nothing, it's going to be better than that mountain of pain that mm. you're already suffering with. And it's with physical pain that comes emotional pain, and they just go hand in hand. And that's one thing I really love about my medicine is it doesn't differentiate. It doesn't look at it like, oh, well, you came in for an elbow situation, and so I don't want to hear about your insomnia or the fact that you can't go to work, so that's causing you anxiety. It's all just lumped into one big mm -hmm. thing, and we're just like, okay, what's going on? Tell me, and I will help you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think that's a cool piece to holistic approaches in general that I'm finding as a patient, really, that's like embarking in that world now, yeah. is that there is a lot less localized treatment. Right. And oftentimes the localized barking, right, that area that's barking is oftentimes coming from a different place. Right. And so we're, what are we doing to find that? And, and how are we managing not just that one thing that's barking and all the other effects, like you said, psychologically, mm -hmm. but like where is it coming from and why is it coming from there? And is there mm -hmm. something that we can do to actually repair the cause and some of the approaches rather than just the that focused area? And it's so myopic, right? It's like so nearsighted. So I really love that you included that in part of the initial description because I think that that's such a huge thing people need to realize is holistic is is the sense of whole, right? right. So just the word in and of itself is like looking at you from all sides and yeah. that's not really done it, and there's a lot of reasons for it not maliciously but you know western medicine has a place but it's it is so compartmentalized because of the specialties and all of these things that maybe the systems just aren't designed to um, listen to all the questions. Right. And sometimes there's a secondary 
situation that happens like if your left hip is really bothering you your right knee might start to hurt because your gait has shifted so when people come in even if their knee isn't their primary thing i'm always like so how's that knee how's that mm -hmm. other ankle and we look at all of that because you're you're trying to prevent problems that's the other yeah. big thing which is where all that seasonal information comes from a big part traditionally of acupuncture was preventing illness and that's why we ask a lot of questions that seem rather random and make no sense but really we're trying to figure out okay what potentially could happen and how do we try to stop that from occurring and a lot of it is like wear a scarf on a windy day you know that will keep your neck and shoulders from being being all tight end. So it's a whole it's bunch of, I could go all day with those. No, no, and they're really helpful because yeah. in my last segment, I was speaking to a holistic um, nurse practitioner in mental health, mm -hmm. and it was exactly that message. The simple things are what we seem to be missing because we're right. so busy in our paces of life that we're just reaching for the next novelty and the next medication and the next yeah. uh, special weight loss program and the next right. antidepressant or the next meditation app or all of these things to help us when there are better answers, there are better ways to prevent it, and there are better therapies that may um, be more proven in addition to the things that they can do for themselves. But I want to I want to go back because people hear okay. the word acupuncture, and again, someone that also I'm very naive to this, so I'm excited to learn from you today. <laughs> um, I've had acupuncture. I agree with you that it's not painful. I've had like myofascial muscle trigger release needles. That's that's something yeah different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, and people who've had that, I try to be very clear, like, yes. it is not no. the same thing. I mean, acupuncturists can do that because that's local needling, but most of us, that is not our go-to. And there's an intention behind why you would do exactly. that. But yeah, no, acupuncture itself, man, the needles were, I was like afraid they'd break as they were being, I mean, they're, they're really, so small. They're hair thin. And they only go in, like, millimeters. Yeah, tiny, them. right? And they're, I mean, there's all different gauges, but they're, like, you could, Put one into a balloon and take it out and keep the balloon from wow. popping. Is there that like they're that tiny? That's important to know. Yeah. So like we're talking like well inside of a yeah. pore. Yeah. 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 So acupuncture, what I know, and these are like very basics. Mm -hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, you think of acupuncture, you usually are, you know, that it, you know, came from like ancient China. Right. Thousands. Thousands. Maybe right thousands of years ago. It, the the range is anywhere from three thousand to ten thousand, and it's semantics at that point. Yeah, yeah. long time, <laughs> yeah, long, long, time. long, long time. And in multiple, like a lot of people think it's just China. There are multiple incidences across the world that they found. I mean, so this there's variations of this and all of Asia, each country has their own different version of it. And I mean, it, you can track it, but it's, it's, it's not widespread. just... It's widespread. It's very widespread. So, and then I was thinking, so if, if we're such a great country, and of course we started a little later. Right, a little but, later. A little later. Uh, but why why is it not fully affordable by insurance? And why, like, why aren't we there yet? I always ask yeah. myself that with these complimentary pieces. Like, why are we not there yet? And I was thinking, like, when did it actually come to the U.S.? And I read an article, and this may not be right, but... It was an interesting thing to either yeah. dispel or to confirm that it wasn't widely publicized as a form of therapy until Nixon yep. mm -hmm. went over to China and his accompanying New York Times reporter yeah. had to have an emergent appendectomy. Yes. And had got like what, what their, their main method of pain control there was acupuncture, right. not narcotics. So he was actually being treated for pain with this thing called acupuncture, totally foreign to U.S. And then when they came back, because he was a reporter, like disseminated this information widespread yeah. and proposed Reportedly, that's kind of like where... That was sort of the jumping off really? spot. And up until... So I have been licensed for 20 years, just about. And um, when I was in training, it wasn't even a legal licensed modality in New Hampshire. So it's still relatively new in certain states to even acknowledge it. And some of that is the smaller states just didn't, you know, it's, it's a pain to start a new licensing program. Sure. <laughs> for but, everybody. <laughs> but it shows how new to this country, and I think our medicine in the U.S. is very germ theory based, and you know, can we kill it? Can we cut it out? Can we do something big <laughs> and bold and drastic? Mm -hmm. And acupuncture is very subtle, mm -hmm. and I, I think maybe that's why it, it's a little bit weird to some people. Well, different. <laughs> it's very and, different. Yeah. And, and I think and weird is interesting. It's a good word to use because it the antonym is normal. 
Right. And like, what's normal, right? Normal is what we surround ourselves with, the things that we conceptualize as being common within the circles that we run. Mm -hmm. And so I hope that like these platforms and other platforms can help to normalize these things so that they don't feel as foreign and they don't feel as weird to people so that, yeah. you know, seeing an acupuncturist or these kind of treatments are just as familiar to right. going and visiting a doctor with a white coat um, and a medical degree. I think that that would be the ultimate hope for the holistic world, right? Right. So I wanted to ask you, because you had mentioned the licensure, a lot of folks probably don't know, and maybe yeah. this is a barrier for why they seek treatment, just how much time goes into lot. being able to practice as a yeah. licensed clinician in this field. So could you just kind of speak to that piece? Yeah, I think that's important because <laughs> people sometimes will say, oh, did you take a weekend course? I'm like, no, 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 no. So I have a bachelor's in biology and that helped me because if you don't have that, you need additional training. You still have to take all of those entry level classes mm -hmm. you would take as if you were going to medical school. Uh, then. It's a master's program. That's what's required in New Hampshire. So my program was three years year round, which is essentially wow. another four year degree. Mm -hmm. I have additional hours in herbal medicine. Um, and then after you do all of that and you get your degree, you have to pass a national board. Mm -hmm. And that's no joke either. Yeah. And then once you do that, you apply for your state's license. That's how it works in New Hampshire. And then you have to keep that active just like a doctor or a nurse would. It's like and my PA degree. It's exactly. You wow. have to get a certain amount of approved credits in practicing. It can't mm -hmm. just be like business management. I read or, an article. Yeah, yeah. No, it can't be anything like that. No, you, so it's, it's quite a bit of training. Yeah, that sounds, well, I'm excited to clarify that because I, did, I didn't even know that. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, wow, that's a lot. And I, you know, it's, it's interesting because and this is, a, this is a stereotype, and I'm even apprehensive to say it because we're being filmed, but <laughs> when I have met acupuncturists, and you included, there is this kindness and approachability and just, you know, they're the kind of folks that you want to sit in a swinging chair and tell stories with, right? Yep. And just in general, I have not met one acupuncturist, and I met a fair amount that I just didn't really enjoy to just being around. Which is different to some of if you project yourself into medical offices and, right. and surgeons and because maybe the pace or the focus is different, um, the feel has been very often different for me. There are outliers for sure. But if I were to put, you know, five of each of them in a room and someone said, whose team do you want to be on just for a recreational thing? Uh, there's this one side that I would go to, yeah. right? Um, and so I wonder if that niceness, you know, there's always that um, saying that's like, don't mistake my kindness for whatever, the, right. what is it, kindness for quietness for kindness or something yeah, you know what i'm saying don't yeah. mistake the demeanor you do, for you're basically dismissed for being kind, kind yeah of. like or maybe you know or even being a young female like, you know you have this right. stigma where maybe your knowledge base isn't as broad or your training isn't as robust yeah. simply because you're not arrogantly mm -hmm. displaying that yeah. you know you've got that humility and groundedness um that is um i'm hoping we shine light on the fact that those things are not um, exclusively combined right. all the time or mutually exclusive. And so hopefully dispelling that would and be good. I, it's funny you mention that because one of the biggest complaints when people show up to my door is my doctor didn't hear me and that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they wanted to change my medication and they wouldn't listen to why that wasn't a good idea or there's a variety of reasons, but for whatever reason they didn't feel heard. And in order to truly hear somebody, you, you have to be able to sit and listen to them. And arrogance has no place with that. So. I think that the national average used to be and I'm out of practice for a few years, so I'm sure my colleagues will get back to me in an email to tell me I'm wrong, but <laughs> roughly 18 seconds before you're interrupted in a medical office right. by a clinician. And you know how much you can hear in that period of time. Yeah. Um, and, and I know I've been very sure about certain judgments and assessments and things and in very short periods of time comparatively to the holistic kinds of consults that I've had, hours yeah. long, discussions versus you know 30 or 45 minutes so it is pretty impressive the difference and I think that it um, the, the feeling heard piece is interesting because we practice medicine holistic medicine any of these things because we want to care for people but caring for people under whatever standards of care exist is very different from making people feel cared for mm -hmm. and the act of making someone feel cared for is just as important right. because the therapeutic aspect of that psychosocially, psychologically is 
an impressive piece of the therapeutic picture, not just mm -hmm. like emotionally, but mm -hmm. the downstream effects of emotionality and what that does to muscle and tissue. And I mean, I'm speaking out of my area of expertise, this is yours, but I know it to be true because as a patient, I've experienced it. So can you speak to that piece of emotional um, well-being, calmness, being heard, and how that would translate physiologically into that person? Well, I always tell my patients that stress might not be causing their problem, but it's not helping them. And so if a person for instance, like if a person doesn't feel comfortable going to their medical practitioner, they might just not go to their medical practitioner, or they might be scared because they didn't do the things that they were told. Like told, and that's the other thing. If a person doesn't co-sign, they're not necessarily going to follow through with whatever advice you give them, and so, you know, they're scared to go back to their doctor a lot of times. So it's important for me to make sure that we agree together on whatever the plan is and to try to reduce their stress no matter who comes in my door and no matter what the problem is i'm always on the back end working on their stress mm -hmm. because we have study after study that shows that spiked cortisol levels you know increases inflammation and what it does to our hearts and all sorts of things and so if we just can tone it down a little bit for people you give them some space to breathe and think and process everything they're going through. Um, I've had people who, whatever their main complaint was, was not resolvable with acupuncture, and they would still say that they had a wonderful, successful experience because they were able to get some clarity in their situation. I love that. There are so many questions that I have. So. I'm going to rapid fire a couple, okay. and you can choose to answer them in whatever right. order that you like. Rapid fire round. Yeah. Most, most people that have followed this segment, Andrew, know me personally, know that it's just a lot of wording. A lot of words, a lot of fast speech, and a lot of quick thinking. I'll keep up. Yeah. So how long do the therapies, the acupuncture therapy sessions take? I'm sure it's a range, but like yeah. on average, what would people expect? Um, talk about uh, affordability, mm -hmm. you know, financial pieces, insurance, alternative right. methods of payment, and then maybe um, like, you know, Everybody has, I'm sure, a customized treatment plan based right. on their diagnosis, but perhaps maybe some of those diagnoses that are most commonly alleviated by acupuncture yeah. and how frequent they would expect to be treated on a weekly sure. basis, you know, uh, to be able to get a good result. Right. So it depends on what's going on with the person. Most people will see results within six sessions. Uh, their problem might not be fully resolved, and most people will start to feel some, like, Almost everybody feels relaxed after the first session. By treatment three, clinically, I can usually see changes. By treatment four to five, the person usually will start to, and that can be you know, careful tracking. And those are measurable things like how often you're getting a headache, uh, how bad are the headaches. Those are things mm -hmm. that somebody can usually write down, and then we'll have a clear idea. So that's when people come in, I'll say, you know, give it, give it six, because that's probably what you're going to need. The sooner a problem has happened, the easier it is to resolve. Yeah. Most people show up when it's been festering for years. And it's like a stain. Yeah. Right? You gotta get it out quick. It's exactly like that. <laughs> I'm gonna use that. <laughs> that's perfect. Because it is, that's like if, yeah. if you, you know, threw out your back today and I was like, come on, Tina, let's go, uh, we could probably patch you up and you'd be on your way tomorrow. <laughs> I have to make an interjection and hopefully you remember all the questions I asked you. <laughs> I'm here to bamboozle. Um, so do you find that you energetically feel connected to people? Just a simple yes or no. Do you feel that? I feel like I and do. And the reason I'm asking yeah. is because I'm a, I'm a, a cynic, an analyst. A, yeah. I'm very scrutinous of things, but there are certain things that you just cannot make up and that are really either coincidental or not, and you just can't explain why. Yeah. I literally just left my chiropractor office. Because you're backwards. <laughs> left hip bursitis. <laughs> right knee and my lower back yeah. and those are the three examples that you have just used <laughs> it's so crazy it's blowing my mind and i had to say it because i don't know what that is but there's no way how many places on our body do we have yeah. how many acupuncture sites are there like 300 yeah there's a lot and you just uh, literally spoke about the three things those are the common like those are the big oh, okay. ones but I mean, they, it is, connected. well, it, it could be, <laughs> because I mean, I could have just as easily been like, well, anxiety and insomnia. I mean, those are the other big ones too. Yeah, I have those two. I do <laughs> have a one-year-old. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that, 
that's actually French is really good for all those things. Yeah. Uh, so cost wise and insurance wise, it really depends. Acupuncture is new to the insurance acceptance and it's bumping into a lot of the same struggles that other clinicians are, which is as acupuncture gets more acceptance, the reimbursement rate is going way down and it's making it so that a lot of people um, are feeling like they don't have as much time. And so that that's an interesting thing that we'll see if that shakes out, but some are starting to, some aren't. It's really across the board yeah. there. Uh, the VA has a program, so if people are veterans, I always tell them, you know, talk to the VA. Awesome. There are uh, nonprofits and for-profits, but community acupuncture clinics, which you treat in a large room and see multiple people, and it brings the cost down. Okay. Um, it's not private room, but it's still a more affordable option mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Where could they go for that kind of information? Uh, you could Google community acupuncture and there are, there's multiple ones around here. So that's another option for mm. people. Uh, yeah, there, so, you know, and the, and the ranges of cost in private room is, is variable. Yeah. And some of it depends also on the other stuff, but your average session runs about an hour. Okay. So good to and know. And more the first time. It's the first time, like for me, when I do an intake, I usually will chat with people for a solid 40 minutes just going over every medical system they've ever had. <laughs> we could talk at length about it. Oh, we would need days, my friend, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> and it's, Everybody does it a little bit differently, but those are your basic answers. Awesome. Thank you. And you nailed all of them despite my <laughs> attempts at tangents. They're like the really easy ones. <laughs> you can tell, ones everybody asks. You can tell a, like a real seasoned clinician because no matter how off base folks get, they'll entertain it and yeah. then it's right back on yeah. the straight now. <laughs> like, okay, so we're, we're answering all these questions. 20 years. Man, wealth of knowledge. I'm so excited. So I have, I have so many more questions, but so you talked about pain. Yeah. You mentioned headaches. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other common things that you either treat or would like to treat more people to be more aware of as options? And then talk about the concept of acupuncture prevention and right. who is best served by that. I'm sure everybody, but um, if anyone's watching in the community that is, you know, just toying with the idea, like who are the call to actions that are the most benefited by this? Musculoskeletal problems, hands down. They're easy. You know, any acupuncturist should be able to help with any kind of a musculoskeletal problem. It's the most common reason why people will show up. Mm -hmm. uh, any kind of reproductive health, uh, there's a lot mm -hmm. of issues with hormonal imbalances and um, I could go, we could have another whole session about my tangents on women's health care. We should, <laughs> Justin, let's get that scheduled. Because <laughs> uh, we don't have time for that. Yeah, no, but I that's a that. really common one too okay. that people come in for. And a lot of times the thing that people don't know is you can work on multiple things at a time. So if you come in, like we could help your back and your hip and your knee all at the same time. And after that, it might be like, okay, maybe pick one more. And then we, we can't. Is there we'll any success at growing limbs back? Not yet. No, Not no, yet. No. I like that oh, no. answer. <laughs> they have done a lot of studies though on phantom limb pain. Love that. And acupuncture is used okay. for that. And there was major research studies being done, uh, some of the first in the nation actually back when I was in school a million years ago. So the data is out there awesome. and it's used for that. Yeah, I was actually looking into some of the articles to prepare for the segment and they were saying that the WHO has, re mm -hmm. so World Health Organization yeah. actually has been recognizing acupuncture for a, a whole list of diagnoses yeah. based on scientific right. evidence that's being acquired. So they're definitely moving in that direction. And there's a lot of data. It's uh, the how isn't quite known. Uh, you know, everybody's best guess is that it's tapping into the neural network somehow, which is probably why it's so good with pain and stress and hormone regulation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think as imaging gets better, as our imaging technology is better, we're able to kind of grasp like around acupuncture points or higher rates of neural activity, mm -hmm. and that's fascinating to me. I could geek out. No, me too. <laughs> we have so many more times to sit here because yeah. yes, I could geek with you. <laughs> no, because everyone talks about meridian, right? right? Like this is the the things that you'll read if you just quickly yeah. Google, which is as far. As I got into it, how do you describe meridian to folks and the concept of energy in the body? I think of them as roads in your body. There are 12 major meridians or paths, and the idea is that your energy or chi flows in these meridians. They flow, it should flow in a very specific way, and at a certain times a day, it's more active. In certain seasons, more meridians are more active, but in general, 
it's like a roadway and things get blocked and that's what's causing whatever the heck is happening in your body. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you've got knee pain, you might have a block in the path that's going through the knee. And so I'm sort of like a traffic cop. I'm just redirecting all the flow with the needles and sending it where it belongs. I have a good analogy as well, just because all the games are being played for the holiday season, right? All the kids. Yeah. And I just recently played Kerplunk, which was a fun, is a great thing. Why have we not played that since we were five know. years old? Because it's fun. It's so fun. And there's a bunch of blocks. Like it's, it's yeah. everything's blocked and you just slightly start to peel away yeah. the layers and they actually look like little acupuncture needles, right? So I was thinking about that game when I was thinking about that concept. I'm going like to hire you for marketing. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> so like, uh, you know, I think that that concept though, that visual of yeah. just kind of removing right. the offending things so that things can flow easier, that's what popped into my brain. And that's what an acupuncture is doing. And, but the, the data does show that those acupuncture points we're using do have higher rates of nerve activity. So it's um, also then helping things further down the line. So often when people come in for acupuncture, and this is the part that confuses them, you could come in for your knee and I might be treating your opposite shoulder mm -hmm. because sometimes if you're poking at the thing that's uncomfortable, it can be sore. So mm -hmm. we have all different ways of doing things. I'm sure, <laughs> and you have just like, graze the surface of, I'm sure, like a very deep, vast zone of knowledge. And just being able to do that is a skill in and of itself. I was saying that to the nurse practitioner I saw recently because it's to simplify these very challenging, involved, complex theories and systems is just really impressive. But we do have a time limitation and I want people to know where to find um, more information about uh, your practice and just this the concept of acupuncture and be able to reach out if they had any questions. So what yeah. would be the best method? Is it your website? You can go to my website, which is The Healing Hedgehog, and feel free to either send me an email or call me. I, I set up consults. I love acupuncture, so I'll just chat with people for 15 or 20 minutes. Like, I'll just tell. answer your questions. I sure, that. I love it. <laughs> Guys, please check out um, uh, thehealinghedgehog.com. For more information, uh, as you can tell, tons of knowledge to share, lots of things that can be treated and prevented, and it would just really be um, in your best interest to take the 45 minutes out of your day to just get a consult with somebody in your area to see if you can optimize your life, because there's no reason that you should have to live in pain every day without you know, overturning rocks to make sure that you haven't had some options available to you in your garden that you haven't really necessarily taken a peek at. So April, thanks again for sharing thank your for wisdom, me. and uh, thank you all for joining in, and please come back next Time. We are definitely going to have April back on the show and more exciting guests. Uh, have the most amazing holiday season through the new year, and we hope to see you back on our channel. Uh, until next time, make sure to put your best foot forward.